Hey guys, welcome to Mike It Yourself. Uh, today I'm going to start the um, swap out of the original wheel and tire on my uh, Harley Fat Boy. I'm going from the 16 inch rim in the front to the 21 inch rim. So I've got that here. Um, I need to swap over the um, rotor from the original and uh, take it in to get the tire mounted and balanced for that wheel and then because that wheel kicks up the height a little bit um, I'll be installing some fender risers uh, to lift that fender up a little bit so that way the uh, tire doesn't run so I went ahead and bought these uh, little chrome deals and uh, I'll walk you through installation on these this is my first time doing this on a Harley. Um, actually, on any bike, I've never increased the wheel size. So it's my first time. I'm sure I'm going to learn a couple of things along the way, which I hope to share with you all. Uh, the cool thing about this wheel is it is sealed, so I won't have to do a tube in it. Um, this is a DNA 21-inch uh, 60 spoke. Uh, I think the width on it, if I remember correctly, is a 3.5. So it's not really narrow, uh, which is what I didn't want for my bike. Um, it just, you know, that's not my thing. So um, I'm going to go ahead and take off this front wheel now. And we'll get to switching over the rotor. And uh, hopefully the next stop will be taking the wheel into the uh, shop to get it mounted and balanced. Okay, guys. So we got the front wheel off. Uh, my next step is to, to get that fender raised. And uh, right after I do that, I'll probably take advantage of the fact that I can get inside that forks there. Got a lot of dirt built up there. Um, clean those off. And uh, yeah, just again, opportunity to get into those hard to reach places when uh, everything's all together. Get that cleaned up and hopefully it'll last a bit um, between washes there. So on this fender, there is a bolt, a nut I should say. On the inside, I don't think it's tacked welded, tack welded on or anything, so you may have to hang on to it. Um, I'll find out right now. Okay, so just moving this around, uh, as soon as I put a little bit of leverage on here, I can feel that nut on the inside moving around. Um, so I'm gonna have to hold that. I'm not sure what size that is. I just happen to have a 13 millimeter next to me. And I know most, or, yeah, most uh, American bikes or American made vehicles are standard, not metric. But if it fits, it fits, right? Uh, as long as you're not doing anything that's gonna potentially uh, round off your nut or your bolt, because if you, end up doing that then any real mechanic knows that that's the difference between a 30 minute and a three-day weekend job <laughs> when you strip something out that isn't a really crappy place to get to and the only thing you have is that cheap set of uh, extractors that you buy hmm. so we don't want to do that Okay guys, so those spacers are on. It's there, so that should lift up my fender um, high enough. All right, so the next step is to take off the rotor from the old wheel, uh, which is just five bolts. It's really important to identify um, what side that is on if you're like mine where you only have a single rotor so some bikes in the front have dual calipers so you have a rotor on both sides um, <clears throat> on my bike I have one and it's only on the left side the reason that's important is because uh, and especially in this case when I take my new rim and tire down to the shop I need to tell them what direction to mount or what is the direction of rotation so most tires uh, especially for bikes they have a rotation arrow 
that's printed. So on the bottom here, this one, it, you probably can't see it because it's a little far, uh, but there's an arrow that shows that this tire rotates in this direction. That's because these treads are cut in a certain pattern so that as you go through water um, and, and different types of um, uh, ground, it's made to tread a particular way. So the best example is the water example where when you go through, it'll actually cut through the water and push it out. So that way you maintain traction as you go through that water. Uh, if you go the wrong direction, then it's not going to perform as it should. Um, if you're doing 12 miles an hour, you'll probably never see the difference. But if you're moving, you're doing 30, 40, 50 miles an hour, and you hit a puddle of water, um, one, that's just not a good thing in the first place, but your chances of wiping out are far uh, decreased if this tire is put on correctly. If it's done wrong, all bets are off. Okay, so I've got the, uh, came with a little cap that was on this um, side of the wheel. And the first thing I noticed is the bearing for this was just kind of sitting in there and there's no grease on it. So, um, you know, again, I'm more of a, I've, I've had more work done or done more work on cars than I have on motorcycles. Um, and I've always seen bearings be greased. So I'm gonna apply some bearing grease to this insert it in and then the kit or the wheel came with uh, the uh, little seal that goes there and that should be it I don't see anything that's gonna cause me a problem as far as spacing goes uh, so that's good Okay, so I've got the disc on there, the uh, rotor, and uh, I still need to look up the torque values on those because I'm sure they should be torqued. Um, if not, I'd be really surprised. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people will do it without torquing them. Um, but just as a rule of thumb, anything that, for me at least, that's going to keep me on the road, so like the axle bolts, um, <laughs> your handlebars, um, your brakes, those are the things that if they have torque values, I'd recommend highly to pay attention to those details because the, your life depends on it, right? I mean, um, super important. So you wanna make sure you do pay attention to those things. So I'm gonna get that torqued and I believe the other side, I just need to grease that bearing and put the uh, seal uh, in there. And then I can go ahead and throw it on the bike just to get a look-see on it. All right, so there it is. Um, I put it on. On the other side, there is a small gap, but that's expected because I don't have the speedometer. Um, overall, looks really good. No issues. She's clean. So, I'm going to go ahead and take this over to the shop, get the uh, tire mounted and balanced, and then we'll complete this uh, job on the fat boy. Okay, we got the wheel back from the shop, tires mounted and balanced, so now we just got to put it on the bike. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so the wheel is um, on the bike, I just need to torque my bolts, uh, add the caliper back on, and then uh, put the little caps, um, chrome caps to hide the axle ends, but uh, this is a done deal. So we'll take a quick shot of what this thing looks like outside. 
Okay, so here's the completed look. And uh, I love it. Looks awesome. So this is the 21 inch tire on this bike. Um, I'm not a big fan of the like 26 inch I think is the other one. Um, for me that's a little too much. I think that 21 inch sets it off just right. So there you go. That is a replacement of the front wheel. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, um, please like, subscribe. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, until then, see you on the next video.